Materials can be a bit of a pain sometimes because you want to apply a material to a certain place you maybe want to have a little bit of extra detail uh, but you don't have the geometry to apply it to because if you're used to just applying materials like I don't know selecting this and then saying uh, let's make that a new material um, uh, let's assign new and then we can make this like I don't know uh, red assign you're always going to be stuck with these hard edges and only where you have geometry and that's just not a great way of doing things so a alternative way of doing things is making a setup like this you can do this within blender and then export the image files as like textures for something like unity or unreal or alternatively you can make the masks that we're going to get into in a second and you can use those inside of an engine to then, then display more procedural materials within that engine so this whole shark is one material and you might be uh, panicking by seeing the amount of mess that this node setup is. I've got a, a quick little other example that we're going to be looking at as well. That is uh, this player character that I've made, which is a lot simpler because it's only solid colors. And pretty much what's happening here is you can see here, I've got an RGB mask. And I'm using that to only apply certain shaders to certain parts of the mesh. Then for uh, the purposes of doing a render here, I've just applied some colors. But really what I've used it for is within the Unreal Engine itself is being able to then have these colors as parameters. So now during gameplay, I can change the colors of the materials I've made inside of Blender. So I've made a, a quick little uh, practice model here and it's got a number of different materials. I've got this shiny green slimy like material. I've got this cloudy green and blue material. And I've got this tryptophobia triggering uh, green and red material. And again, I could just apply this based on geometry, but we're going to do something else. So what I've done is I've made a fourth material mixed where I have all of these node setups in one material. Now, we're going to add in an image texture. And let's zoom in on that a little bit. Don't mind the fact that my mouse is all freaked up. Uh, and we're going to add a new image texture. Make it whatever size you want. We're going to make it, uh, let, let's make it a 2K uh, sized texture. And we'll call this RGB mask. And then we'll go up to the normal layout again. We'll go into edit mode. And as you can see, there's a lot of geometry here for me to work with. It doesn't really matter. I was just lazy. And uh, we select all, press U, and you should really UV unwrap this properly. Uh, but we're going to just smart UV project for the time being so that we have a UV map. As you can see now, there's, there's a UV map here. And going over into the texture paint now, uh, we can start painting on this model. And it's relatively slow because, again, it's relatively high poly. So now you go up here, go into RGB and just set green and blue to being zero. And you just simply start painting everything you want to have the first material. It's just as easy as that. So up here in options, if you turn off occlude, uh, you'll see, for instance, I have one of these tentacles that's in front of this other one from this perspective. But if I do a stroke, the other one will still get painted. This can be very annoying sometimes, but if you just want to do like broad, big strokes to get uh, a color mask on something, it can be very, very useful. And then you also have back face culling. Ignores faces pointing away from the viewer, which means that if we have these faces which are pointing towards us, We've got the faces here that are pointing away from us. In combination with Occlude uh, being off and back face culling, uh, it should in theory also mean that I paint the other side of this mesh, which it does, uh, but you still have things like uh, that little line over there, which it, it just gets a little bit iffy sometimes. And frankly, you're just going to have to get used to that much because um, making these masks 
can be a little bit annoying. But let's say that this is about everything we want to be red. Then we move on to putting red to zero. Very important that's actually at zero, not like 0 0.05, 0 0.0. It has to be zero. And then we can use the green mask. And the green mask will... Um, like we'll paint these tentacles with the green, maybe this one too. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, little spots showing up all over the place uh, in colors that we don't want them to be. And that's because our UV map is a damn mess. And this is why you want to really UV unwrap things yourself. Uh, because what it's doing is when I press my paintbrush on the mesh, it's just putting a paintbrush on that part of this image and painting it there. But if that paintbrush is overlapping with other UV islands over this view over here, it's going to start painting it in, in the model as well. Because even though we are painting here in the model and we're nowhere near, for instance, this tentacle, in the actual texture, we might be. We now uh, take the blue channel and that's going to be this tentacle over here and that's a bit too much maybe. This tentacle over here is going to have the blue channel applied to it as well as this one. It's got a little bit of green. You can't see it anymore because it's now covered in blue but that green is still there. That's the reason we're doing R, G and B separately is that these can lay on top of each other. So what you can also do is you can set uh, the blue to like a little bit less, overlay it here, and now it'll have a mix between the two materials uh, showing up there. So this is a very bad paint job, I will readily admit that, but again, it's mostly for demonstration purposes. Now, going back into the shading tab, we will uh, be able to see that our RGB mask, if we uh, pull it up in here, uh, exists. It's, it's, a, it's a mess again, but it exists. So what can we do with that? Well, this is where things get interesting. Because obviously you can just, uh, with Alt-S, you can just save this to a directory and uh, then import it into your engine of choice and continue working with the materials in there. Because we're going to uh, add a mix shader node. Uh, and we're going to use this as the factor for that. So, and we'll need to separate the RGB uh, from our output here. So now we have a pin that's the red channel. That's these parts over here. We've got a pin that's the green channel. That's these parts over here. And we've got a pin that's the blue channel. That's like that part over there and there. And these parts, that's these parts <laughs> um, are both green and blue channel. So we can now use these gray pins as the factor for a mix shader. So let's put these up here where they're not in the way. And we'll just use this as the factor. And then we can put this BSDF shader into there. And this one into there. Then we copy the mix shader we plug um, that into the top shader again. We pick the green channel this time, plug it into the factor, and we have what we need. That being said, uh, you can actually mix four things with this because the way I have it set up right now, I'm not even using the green channel. The green channel is just gonna be everywhere that no other channel is so that's going to be like the base color so what you really want to do is disconnect this and just just make something that is uh the base color so let's for the purpose of this make that just like pink add in another mix shader plug the top shader into there and use the blue channel did i say green channel before i meant blue channel and then that shader finally goes into the surface. So now we should see a mix of all the materials that I've shown before. It's gonna take a while to load in because there's a lot of calculation that Blender has to do here. But now you can see there is a mix of every single material that we've created on one object. And this is one material. So you can bake this if you want to, make a texture map out of this, and then import that texture map and a normal map and a roughness map and everything of the source 
into your game engine, which is exactly what I have done for this shark. I have made a roughness map. You can see a roughness shark. Uh, we've got a base color map. We've got a ambient occlusion map. We've got a, well, that's about it. We, I've got a materials blend map as well, just in case I needed to have that enabled in the engine as well. Uh, but that's how you can use RGB masking to mix and match materials. And obviously you can have more than one RGB mask, as I uh, am able to show here. For my player character, I didn't have enough channels in just RGB to get all the colors and all the things that I wanted to. So I just made two separate textures and you, you can just keep blending them together with more and more and more mixed shaders. Just blend two shaders together, plug that into a new one, plug that one into a new one, plug that one into a new one, plug that one into a new one. And that's exactly what this is doing here as well. We've got RGB and uh, what you're seeing here is I've got a blue color, that's the output color. That's getting multiplied by the red channel. So everywhere there's a red channel, this value will be one. Everywhere there's not a red channel, this value will be zero. So it'll be black. Then that gets added to the exact same process in the green channel and the blue channel. And separately, the same thing is happening over here with a different texture. Then those two textures get added on top of each other and that goes into the base color. So I guess I don't need to make a separate video how to do that in Unreal, because I literally just did. I hope this shed some light in how to uh, mix and match materials in a more gradient and uh, more efficient way than doing everything inside separate materials.